You're listening to a message from Gateway Church Geelong. We hope it blesses you. For more information about Gateway, visit gc.org.au. Yes, thank you that it's Pentecost Sunday, amen? Great time to be in church and to outwork what like Pastor Lee said, what God has already done in our lives. This morning, I just want to talk about the title of my message is Exercise Our Spirit. And who here has ever done exercise, either on a regular basis or at least maybe once in your life and decided it's really not for you? So exercise is not always enjoyable, but it is necessary for our strength, for our endurance to get fit and healthy. And, you know, even when I used to have a personal trainer a few years back, there were things that I would do that, of course, I'd never tell him to try and see if I could uh, maybe lessen the experience of having to go on things, especially like, has anyone ever done the Stairmaster? I'll tell you, 30 seconds on that thing and you're like, ugh. But I would, I would, I learned, I got into a habit of only tying my sneakers up just once. I didn't double knot it because if it came undone, I'd have to say, oh, just excuse me for a minute. I just have to get off the treadmill and do up my shoelaces and see, oh, how long can I extend this for? Maybe another 30 seconds. But exercise is important because it does build our strength and endurance and it does give us that health that we need. And I heard this quote a few weeks ago and I thought it was quite funny. It says, these two ladies were talking to each other and the first lady turns to the other lady and says, do you exercise? And she says, yes, I have walked with the Lord for the last 20 years. So if you feel like you haven't done anything in the natural, if you've walked with God for a few years, you can say, that's my exercise. You know, Pastor Glennis spoke a couple of weeks ago on Nehemiah and the rebuilding of the walls. You know, when Nehemiah heard about the state of the people and the walls, he set his mind to rebuild and restore. And first off, he fasted and he prayed and sought the mind of God for this situation. You know, this morning we have been called to be people who rebuild and restore. And with that comes the responsibility to exercise our spirit to help us with that challenge. Exercise is not always enjoyable, but it is necessary. Exercising our spirit may not always be enjoyable, but it is necessary for the task that God has given us to build, rebuild and restore not only our lives, but people's lives that we may know. So what did Nehemiah do? He fasted and he prayed. He needed the mind of God for this situation and he needed to go in the authority that God had given him. The task required strength and endurance and he got that through prayer and fasting. You know, when Nehemiah began the process of rebuilding the walls, he experienced much opposition. You know, and likewise, we actually shouldn't be surprised if we have in our own lives over the last few weeks experienced opposition because the arrows have been shot into the enemy's territory. The enemy knows that we have been standing up and saying, we are declaring God's deliverance. We are declaring God's victory. We are declaring God's freedom. And the enemy is thinking, oh, yes, okay. Yeah, oh, yeah, I want them to live in their perfect harmony. I want them to be able to skip through the tulips. I want them to be able to outwork what God has done for them. Does he, is he like that? No. And that's why we have declared, we have shot those arrows we have let the enemy know that we are on the war path so to speak because we are outworking what God has already established in our hearts and our lives he said come follow me we said we are going to do it so because that because of that means we are going to be rebuilding and restoring it is a season that God has specifically brought us into at this time so that we can see the lives of people around us rebuilt and restored that we can see the outworking of all that God has already established for us. We have been called this morning, don't ever underestimate this, we have been called this morning to destroy, to tear down and pull down strongholds this morning. That is what what God has called us to do. We We are pulling down the things that are not of God. We are pulling down those things that are not of God and allowing God's work to outwork in our life so that we can see all those things. 
but we are not just leaving it there. We're not just pulling things down and leaving it there. We want to see people's lives rebuilt and restored the right way this morning so that they can walk in the freedom that is for them, that freedom that is for you this morning because of what Jesus did on the cross. In Nehemiah 2 verses 10, it says this in the New King James Version. When Sam Ballot, the Horonite, and Tobiah, the Ammonite official, heard of it, they were deeply disturbed that a man had come to seek the well-being of the children of Israel. They were deeply disturbed. When I read that, that really struck a chord with me. It wasn't even like it was mild curiosity. Oh, what's this guy coming to do? It says they were deeply disturbed. And that made me think, why? Why were they so deeply disturbed? It's disturbed. The children of Israel weren't their people. I mean, they, they, so what was their concern with this guy coming over to do this? They, because they were happy how things were. They didn't want someone to come along and make function happen again. They didn't want brokenness. They didn't want disrepair. They didn't want unhealthiness. They didn't want containment to be disrupted. In Nehemiah 1.3, it says, The people were in great distress and reproach. That meant the people felt shame. They felt the disappointment on their lives. There was things that they were experiencing, great distress because of what was going on around them. And they... And these people wanted them to stay locked up in that shame. These people wanted them to be stay locked up in that disappointment. These people wanted them to stay locked up in disrepair and unhealthiness. It's like poking a, poking a bear. And you know, they didn't want brokenness to be touched. They didn't want unhealthiness to be touched. They didn't want containment to be touched. They didn't want disconnection to be touched. They didn't want disrepair or reproach to be eradicated in these people's lives. They were happy for these people to stay broken, disrepaired, discontented, scattered from what God had actually wanted them to be. And they wanted the work of the Lord to not be established in these people's lives. Sam Ballot, Tobiah and Geshem were intent on stopping this work. You know, if something is laying in ruins, it can't do what God intended it to do. Or if in the natural, if a wall is broken, it can no longer protect because the walls are broken. If a gate is damaged or broken, people can't get through. And that's why these guys were so intent on leaving it that way. Because if you don't have protection, you know, that is just as uh, if you're coming up against an enemy, if you don't have protection, you can see that you're not going to be very safe. If we want people to walk through these, through these doors, we want them to be walking through restoration in this place. We want them to be walking into the presence of God in this place. We want them to be walking into freedom and victory in this place. And that's why we have declared that we are a healthy church. That's why we have declared we are going to follow Jesus because he leads us into all truth. He leads us into all health. He leads us into victory. And that's why we are standing together in this season. We are banding together and we are saying we are going to outwork all that God has for us. We are following Jesus. And not only are we going to walk, but we are going to run to see his promises come to pass in our lives this morning. Amen. Amen. When Nehemiah encouraged the people to rebuild the walls, they were happy to do it. They said, let us rise up and rebuild. And God is encouraging us to continue to rise up and rebuild. But that requires action and movement on our behalf. God is wanting us to rebuild the right way and with the right thinking. So during this time of rebuilding, don't hold on to the old ways of thinking and don't hold on to the old ways of doing things. And, you know, it may not seem like much to you, but be open to the voice of the Holy Spirit. If he's saying, you know, actually right now that attitude is not the best because right now I'm restoring you, I'm rebuilding you into health and that attitude is not going to actually help you in this, in this new season. 
If there's something that you've been thinking and it's been going over your mind and you know actually that it's not rebuilding and repairing you into health, say, Holy Spirit, help me to lay down that thinking that is not of you because I want to walk in all that you have for me. And it may not seem much, but during this season, say the Holy Spirit daily, I am open to you. Speak to me, Holy Spirit, because if there's any thinking, if there's any emotions, if there's anything in my heart that can stop me from being all that I am, help me to break through those things and lay them down. Because this is a season where God is doing a new thing. See, I am doing a new thing. Thank God that our God is so progressive that he doesn't leave us back there, but there's always new things for us to experience and encounter as we follow him. Amen? Behold, I am doing a new thing. And the good news is it's already in us because we were created in God's image. He is about restoration. He is about rebuilding. He is about establishing. He is about expansion and growth. And he is about unity. So because of that, we can outwork that knowing that God is with us and will help us because we've been made in his image. So let us this morning keep encouraging one another to keep rising up, to keep pushing through and to keep rebuilding. We can do it. We can most certainly do it. What did Caleb say to the children of Israel? We can do it. We can most certainly do it. And this morning there's that spirit in each one of us that says to encourage one another, let us do it together. We can most certainly do it this morning. And in Nehemiah 2, uh, chapter 2, verses 19 to 20, it says this, But when Sam Ballot the Horonite to buy the Ammonite official And Geshem the Arab heard of it. They laughed us to scorn and despised us and said, What is this thing that you are doing? Will you rebel against the king? So I answered them and said to them, The God of heaven himself will prosper us. Therefore we his servants will arise and build. But you you will have no heritage. You will have no right or memorial in Jerusalem. What was he saying? God will prosper us. Hear me this morning. God will prosper you and I this morning. He is with us. He will help us. He will lead us and guide us because he wants us to rebuild together. If you have been facing opposition to function, to health, to rebuilding and to restoring, be encouraged. God is with you and he is fighting for you. You're not alone in this. God is with you. The great, the makers of the heaven and earth is with you so that you can see this outworked, so you can see function, so you can see health, so you can see restoration and deliverance in your life. And what can we say to the enemy this morning? I want us to actually stand. And I want us to say this together. Enemy, you have no right. Enemy, you have no right. Enemy, you have no heritage. Enemy, you have no heritage. And enemy, you have no memorial. There is something that needs to rise up in our spirits, and I'm not saying that it's already happening because I believe it is, that we band together in unity. We stand right now as a body believers and we say to you, enemy, you have no right over our family. You have no right over our children. You have no right over this church in the name of Jesus. We are standing on our covenant rights. We are standing on the authority of Jesus Christ that is in us. We are building up our spirits on Pentecost Sunday and as we outwork all that he has established for us. We declare your freedom. We declare your liberty. We declare your deliverance. We declare wholeness and health in these people's lives. Lord God, we declare restoration. We declare rebuilding as we unify together as a body of believers and we stand for all that you have for us. Yes, we are following you. Yes, we are not only walking, but we are running and it may not feel exciting to do but as you keep running as you keep your eyes focused on Jesus I know I'm not a great runner but it doesn't matter you get the you get the point this morning 
as we run together, as we walk together, as we follow Jesus together, as we keep our eyes on him. I tell you, there is such an outworking that has already started to happen in people's lives. I can see it. It's just like things happening in the spirit over your lives. You may not sense it or feel it straight away, but I can declare to you right now in the name of Jesus that things have already started to be established, that things have already started to be outworked in your lives and in your family lives in the name of Jesus deliverance freedom victory because of the power of the Holy Ghost in our lives the power of the Holy Ghost in our lives thank you Lord Thank you, Lord, for all you've done. We come this morning with a grateful heart that we can stand together and declare. And if you were next to me, I'd put my arms around you. Well, not for those ones that are not touchy-feely, but you would you would know that I'm kind of like, God is a good God. You may take your seats. <laughs> Who's excited here this morning? Big Kev excited. On your way out, there's some steak knives for you. (laughs) We can say to the enemy, you have no right. And this is not even just a wishy-washy thing. This is a true and correct fact. You have absolutely, thoroughly, wholly, utterly no right in our family, in our families, in our children and in the life of this church. You have no right. You have no heritage, which means you will not inherit. You will not get a single portion, enemy. You will not steal our heritage in Jesus Christ because it's our birthright and we stand on our covenant rights this morning. And you will have no memorial. You know, in the natural, the memorial is a statue or structure that is established to remind people of a person or event. But the enemy's not going to establish anything. But you and I this morning, we're going to establish praise to our God. You and I this morning are going to establish honour to our God. And we may not have something over here that shows that is the significance of what God has done. We don't need a living thing as that such. Like we heard this morning, we are the living stones. We are the outworking. We are what God has already We show what God has already done. And we, we re- might remember what God has done, we truly do, but we don't just leave it there. We don't just leave it to remembrance. We apply it daily to our lives, all that God has done for us. And we will together continue to declare the goodness of God. You know, communion and our testimonies remind us of what God has done, but we want to outwork that daily in our hearts and our lives, reminding, being remembered of all that God has done for us, but then outwork it. So we don't just leave it there, but we outwork it daily and not just be saying, oh, that was good to hear. No, you can have it this morning. You can do it this morning because the enemy has no memorial. But not only that, our flesh is not going to have a memorial either. I don't want my flesh to establish my paths this morning. I want the Word of God to establish my paths this morning. I don't want my flesh to dictate to me how my day is going to be. I want the praise of my God as I praise His name to dictate how my day is going to go. If I may wake up grumpy, which doesn't happen, I'm sure, um, the children who I work with might tell you differently. But as I praise God, as I worship my God, as I pray in tongues on the way to work, that establishes my day. That establishes the fact that I'm going to have a good day because I'm making sure that I keep my focus on God. My flesh is not going to dictate to me. I'm not going to build a memorial to my flesh and go, well, you can have your rights, you can have your opinions, you can have your way. I want my life to be the opinion of what Jesus Christ says about me and says about you. I want my life to be about my rights in the fact that I can walk in all that God has for me. Not say, not rising up and going, oh, that's unfair. But saying, God, I am going to choose to follow you. I'm keeping my eyes on you so that you can outwork in me all that you have for me. So that I, my flesh doesn't be, have a memorial because I want it to be about God this morning. It's not about the enemy. It's about God, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and allowing him to be established in our lives. And this morning, don't forget, you have the letter of authority 
from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords that helps you get through your day. In Nehemiah 4 verses 6, it says this, So we built the wall and the entire wall was joined together up to half its height for the people had a mind to work. This morning we have a mind to work. This morning we have the mind of Christ and we have the mind to rebuild, arise and restore. Samballot, Tobiah and Geshem continued to oppose the work of the Lord. They tried ridicule, threats of attack and confusion and discouragement. And in Nehemiah 4 verses 14 to 23, it says this. And I looked and arose and said to the nobles, to the leaders and to the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, great and awesome, and fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives and your houses. And it happened when our enemies heard that it was known to us and that God had brought their plot to nothing, that all of us returned to the wall, everyone to his work. So it was from that time on that half of my servants worked at construction while the other half held the spears, the shields, the bows and wore armour and the leaders were, were behind all the house of Judah. Those who built on the wall and those who carried burdens loaded themselves so that with one hand they worked at construction and with the other held a weapon. Every one of the builders had his sword girded at his side as he built and the one who sounded the trumpet was beside me. Then I said to the nobles, the rulers and the rest of the people, the work is great and extensive and we are separated far from one another on the wall. Therefore, whenever you hear the sound of the trumpet, rally to us there. Our God will fight for us. So we laboured in the work and half of the men held the spears from daybreak until the stars appeared. At the same time, I also said to the people, let each man and his servants stay at night in Jerusalem then that, that, that they may be, guard, may be our guard by night and our working party by day. So neither I, my brethren, my servants, nor the men of the guard who followed me took off our clothes, except that everyone took them off for washing. So he first says to them, don't be afraid. Remember who our God is. He is great and mighty and awesome. He is the King of Kings. And then he said, make sure we fight for each other, your family and what God is establishing for you. You know, when obviously when we were children, we would sometimes fight with each other I know you might th think we were angelic, but we weren't. And we would sometimes obviously fight with each other. But if anyone said anything about my brother or my sister, I tell you, that made just something rise up within you. You went out and, uh, you know, how dare you say that about my uh, brother or my sister? And that's the same thing, you know, not that I'm encouraging us to fight with one another because I'm not, but we need to unify together and fight for each other. If someone says something that you know is not true, say, oh, actually, we don't need to listen to that right now. I'm going to stand up for my brother and my sister and I'm going to fight for them in unity. You know, unity is something that we need to fight for. And that's why if people say anything, we are going to band together. We're going to fight for each other and we're going to say, you know what, that person is a good person. You go talk to them. If you've got something to say, you go talk to them and you work it out with them. Don't come around and sniff around and say things that are inappropriate. You, we're going to band together and unify together and fight for each other during this season of rebuilding and restoring and forever, of course, too. But everyone had a position to help with the rebuilding. Some worked at construction and some were the bodyguards watching for anything coming and protecting the workers. That, there was one that had the trumpet. You know, when they it said when they heard the sound, they were to come together. They were to not stay isolated or removed. And this morning when we hear the sound, we need to come together as a body of believers and gather around each other to fight and protect and declare that God is fighting for us. Each builder had his sword at his side as he built. And what is our sword this morning? It is the word of God. So don't leave home without it. Make sure that when you go to work, that you live out whatever it is that you do during the day, that you have the word of God with you. Not only that, they worked so hard. When you're working like that, you're exercising muscles that haven't been used for a long time. So they would have been sore, but they continued to work. And not only that, they were alert 
which is still an exertion, but they continued to work. So don't give up despite the soreness. Don't give up despite the exertion. Function and freedom and restoration is worth it this morning. Yes, they were exercising their muscles, but they were also exercising their spirit. They were exercising their unity. They were exercising their protection for each other. They were exercising and using the word of God. They were exercising their authority. They were exercising their purpose. They were exercising their role in the body of Christ. And they were exercising their covenant rights. You know, it's so easy this morning to exercise our soul and use it way too much. You know, oh, it's unfair, woe is me, or whatever it may be that we might say to ourselves, I'm not good enough. But when something happens, it's so easy sometimes to resort to our MO. But that's why this season is so specific right now, because we're not going to resort to our MO. We're not going to allow our flesh to dictate to what's going on. But instead, we're going to exercise our spirit so that when something happens or if something goes on, that's going to be the first thing we do when we're faced with opposition. That's going to be the first thing that we do if we come against discouragement. That's going to be the first thing we do when we're faced with confusion. We're going to exercise our spirit by using the word of God, by knowing that God is fighting for us, that we're going to continue to keep our focus on him and allow those things, our covenant rights, our authority, allow those things to be the, in the forefront when we're faced with that, that confusion or despair or opposition exercising our spirit this morning like i've already said we can use the word of god which is the sword of the spirit like the people on the walls they were working but they could pull their sword out and use it when needed could you imagine that you know building if you're um, doing the bricks the next one oh how comes my sword no one else can imagine that no When we're going through our days, if we hear something or our mind starts to go in a certain direction that is contrary to what God says about us, pull out the sword. Use the word of God. No, no, no. This is what God says about me. I've been made in his image. I know he doesn't make junk. So I know that I'm important to him and that he loves me. Your word says, your word says, your word says, I'm going to pull out my sword and use it so that I can nullify those thoughts, nullify those emotions and stand on the truth of God's word, which we know is something that we can establish in our lives. And we can exercise our spirit this morning by praying in tongues. Just like we've heard with it being Pentecost Sunday. You know, this morning we are the living embodiment of that promise. We are outworking that promise right now in our lives. And it doesn't have to be just for today. It's for the rest of the week that we outwork the promise that God gave us. Jesus said, I must go so that the helper can come. The helper is with you this morning. The person who can lead you and guide you into all truth and point you to Jesus is with you this morning. But it's not only for today, it's for the rest of the week. And not only that, we have if you've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we have that heavenly language that enables us to be strengthened in the Holy Ghost, that enables us to be rebuilt and restored as we pray in tongues and rebuild ourselves up because it edifies us this morning. In 1 Corinthians 14.4, that's what it says, praying in tongues edifies yourself. It builds you up. It instructs us. You know, edify this morning also means repair. When we pray in tongues, we are repairing. We are repairing our our thoughts when we pray in tongues. We are repairing our emotions when we pray in tongues. If there's something that we're struggling with, we just begin to pray in tongues and we know that we are repairing those things that perhaps could bring damage, that could perhaps bring whatever to our lives. As we pray in tongues, it builds us up, it strengthens us and it repairs us this morning. Do my thoughts need repairing? then I'm going to pray in tongues. Do my emotions need repairing? Then I'm going to pray in tongues and allow that heavenly language to be be rebuilt and restore me and build me up this morning. Do I need some instructions or direction about something in my life right now? I'm going to pray in tongues and use what God has given me. Remember that the efforts of Sam Ballot and the rest of them were futile for the simple reason They were fighting God's plan. 
Remember, the enemy is fighting God's plan. And remember, he is fighting for you this morning. And if you ever struggle during the week, pray in tongues because it rebuilds you up and it repairs you. What does it say? Rivers of living water. If you're feeling dry, if you feel like you're in a desert, begin to pray in tongues. Rivers of living water will flow out of you and that dryness will be dispelled in the name of Jesus. Emotions will be righted. Thoughts will be righted. Directions will be sorted in the name of Jesus as you pray in tongues. If you've been saying, I'm not sure what to do in this situation pray in tongues you'll be surprised how thoughts begin to come to your mind and you can begin to jot them down and say thank you lord that was a thought from you and i can now apply that to my life praying in tongues this morning we have been called to break down strongholds and to repair and rebuild and if you've been experiencing opposition don't be afraid trust god because he will fight for you And let me encourage you this morning to keep rebuilding, to keep functioning and to keep being healthy as we follow Jesus. And don't isolate or disconnect yourself or move away. Let's band together in unity and fight for one another as we rebuild and do what God is asking us to do during this season. This morning, as we're coming to a close, exercise our spirit. And what a great time if you have never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost Pentecost Sunday. And I want to give you that opportunity this morning that if you've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it is such a great gift that God has given you. It is a free gift that God gives you. and it helps you outwork this Christian life. And on this Sunday, I would love to give you that opportunity if you've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that you can this morning. The opportunity and the invitation is for you this morning as we close our eyes. Lord God, we just come to you this morning and we thank you, Lord God, that in each one of us, you've called us to rebuild and restore. I thank you, Lord God, that we've got the power of the Holy Spirit with us to help us and lead us and guide us. Lord God, I thank you that we can nullify the works of the enemy, that he will have no right, he will have no heritage, and he will have no memorial in our lives and the life of this church. We thank you, Lord God, that as we continue to look to you, you will lead us and guide us. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We do know that darkness trembles in your name. We do know that we can trust in you this morning. We do know that you are fighting for us. We do know that we can use your word to establish our path, that we can use the praying in tongues to nullify the works of the enemy we thank you lord for all that you've done for us and we give you praise we give you glory and we give you honor this morning in the name of jesus